things relatively the same, which is kind of expected because there's not a lot of time to blow everything up and say, like, let's start from mm -hmm. scratch. I think you sort of have to go with what you know at this point. Yeah, I mean, both teams, you know, both been very good at drafting throughout their time in the last few months, especially. And they're both very strategical drafters. So you'd imagine that a best of three is fine for experimentation game one, but not in a best of one. Yeah, in a best of one, it's a little bit trickier than that. Mm. And the hero that I did want to highlight was the Broodmother. Both sides can pick it, and both sides yeah. can play it. Yeah, I wonder whether that will come into play. It might just not, be a not, problem. Not these bands, though. It might just be a problem for Team Secret more than anything, because they have uh, all the single target focus so far. No real wave clear coming out from their supports. But we'll see. There's still plenty of draft to go through. Batrider and Bloodseeker being banned away by EG. Um, the Night Stalker Batrider is pretty classic duo, where you've got a nighttime vision advantage as well as a really great pickoff hero. It just makes the enemy team very scared. But I don't know what else you really do to deal with vision advantage that Night Stalker gives you. Uh, Blitz, do you just play a, a lot of five man, a lot of team fight? Yeah, you can do that. And if you just have a very, a very strong lineup where you can just gather up and you don't really care what the enemy team has, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, this pick, really surprising to me, the Magnus third. I guess you have one of the better counters to it in the Rubik already, but I would have figured they would have taken something like the Nature's Prophet, Paul. Mm. But instead, they're going to grab the Magnus here early. Which makes the anime age a pretty scary pick. It's not just AM. Uh, it opens up a lot of different heroes for you. You can do the AM, you can uh, pick heroes like Troll. Troll definitely becomes more viable of a hero. We've seen Troll not be very successful mm. so far. Okay. okay. Dazzle for AG. So they show all of their cores so far. Or their supports. supports. They have Dazzle, Earth Spirit, unless they're doing something really weird. Mm. And they have done Jakiro mid, but yep, I they have, uh, don't think, hours played it. I don't think they want to do it part two of that. It wasn't particularly successful. So leaning more towards off lane potentially, maybe yeah. safe lane. Mm. I think so far. And then if you, I don't know, with the the dazzle, I mean, why do you pick the saving hero? We we talked about it. Like saving supports really haven't been in vogue. The only one that has really been picked up quite a bit has been um, Oracle, and then maybe you could say Bane. Um, but sleep is like a one second save, if that. Do you think there's something specific about, about the Magnus that you just like to be able to have that I tell you single what. target save? Wait. Mm. I was thinking the same, Will, but I, I'm, I'm going to go with the way it is on the screen right now. Okay. Yeah. So the mid one, Ember Spirit. Clara. Yeah, I was also going to point out that uh, Universe has also played that Jakira on the offlane, by the way. Yep. And they needed a mobile hero right now. I think that when you show three of these heroes like this, so far they have no real catch aside from the Earth Spirit. And so you take heroes that just have pure mobility, it's going to be really nice and it puts a lot of pressure on EG. And when you've got the vision advantage already with the Night Stalker, it puts a lot of pressure on the enemy team to group up. So oh, Ember Spirit Death feels Rock. a lot better. Mm -hmm. So that can be just a straight up laning counter, but... Do you ever feel good about running Ember Spirit safely yeah, to dodge say, that? Yeah, I was going to say, Mid-1's going to like that, isn't he? Uh, On the Ember, though. He's quite comfortable. Yeah, but... He's not going to like that lane. He's not going to like the lane, but he's... Gonna it's still it pretty him. nice, overall, yeah. Once he gets a defensive item, he's going to be pretty hard to kill for EG. Mm. So, EG had... I find it really hard to believe they have that Jukero as a mid now, but... you got to ban the Draw Ranger now, right? Possible. I don't know, I, this lineup looks pretty scary if you have like a, a Draw Ranger with an offlane Jukero. Maybe. Yeah. So they ban Venge. EG has to pick their core first anyways. Okay. Yeah, I like Venge more, actually. If they do draw, you have some options. Yeah, at least you have a lot of gap closers on Team Secret. Yeah. So for me, it's... Do you ban a hero like the AM? Even though you know it's kind of unlikely that Secret has played it, have they played it at all? Um, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, Ace has played it. It's his fourth most played under this current patch. Okay, that's nice. He's only uh, only played more Brood, TB, and Veno matches than he has AM. It's so. all in officials, but still. 
you just want to pick more mobility and like single target focus, right? You need heroes that get to the back line of Dazzle that put pressure on the Death Prophet. Yeah, I I think I just like Seeker right now to farm. Yeah. I don't know if don't take game engagements. Them, yeah. it, plus, it's really hard to fight these early engagements against heroes like DP because you know this hero is going to push into you that it's very strong. And for the most part, she can really turn the tide with aren't, heals behind her as well. Aren't you a little bit nervous that EG could just be able to five-man into you and you don't actually have quite enough team fight? Because Nightstalk or Rubik don't necessarily give you the biggest team fight in the world. There's definitely supports that could give you a lot more. Magnus is pretty much his big RP, and Ember Spirit, his magic damage is good for the first like 20, 25 minutes, but in that 30, 35 minutes, things could be a lot harder for him. I think right now for EG, you're kind of at a weird cross because you have to pick first you either have to commit to this like push and just like fight sort of style and not take a lot of catch and then for secret it's whether you go in the same direction or the opposite direction and just say we're going to avoid fights and then it'll just be a game of timers it'll be can secret hold out long enough or can eg overrun them like we saw in the last game with Fnatic. i mean i like the option of running them over for eg so then you need to carry that just five mans but what is that? I mean, there was Vengeful Spirit, which got banned. There's Draw Ranger, but you got some gap closer. It's a little dangerous. Team fighting type heroes that maybe give you some sustain. You could um, also aggro try lane them. You could do like Lone Druid or something. Mm -hmm. Go for the Clinks. It's definitely a pushing yeah. style hero and gives you a pickoff opportunity when Team Secret split push. Though that also requires you to go the Orchid build against an Ember, and that has not been the favorable build for Klinks's so far. At least for a while now. Probably six months. That's really nice pick off this game, though. Yeah. Because you know Team Secret are going to split you. Yeah. They have to against this lineup. So for Secret, now the question is, do you go even greedier and just secure <laughs> your absolute late game? Or do you go for something that just has the potential to mid-game fight I like mid-game fighting here for Team Secret. Because I do feel like you've got an advantage in the late game. I was going to say Juggernaut, man. A good focus mid-game fighting hero that takes advantage of Empower. It's he, been a while, though, since yeah, we've seen Jug. It has been a while. We have no disables to be able to cut through his magic immunity, so he's also a really good split pusher in this regard. His danger is going to be clinks in the physical damage that he could potentially overwhelm Jug before he completes the TP out. But he's just going to be that perfect combination of split pushing and fighting for you. So there it is, the draft for first game of the day between these two, Secret and Evil Genesis. Will, where, where, do you, where do you feel like the advantage lay after that draft? I don't know. I kind of want to hear what Austin Damn it. <laughs> no, you can't do that. See, I, we, we hear I tried Austin. Say. I, I tried Austin. Thank you, Paul. I tried. I was like, don't pass to me, Paul. I tried. Don't do it. I need a little bit more time to kind of like set the seeds in my head. Oh, so do I. <laughs> what a coincidence, William. Um, Will. Okay. You're going first. I think that Secret are going to be able to take more fights overall. I think they have the better form of initiation. I think they've got the the like the mini fights down a little bit more. I'm going to go with Secret. Uh, I'm also going to go with Secret. I really like the Juggernaut pick. You heard me. I yeah, no, I Juggernaut, did. So. As soon as it came out, you were. I think it was it was literally on the tip of your tongue. You were about to say it was going and to be a Juggernaut once, pick. And for once, William was going to have to be on the yeah, With a little bit more deliberation, I feel like I came to the conclusion <laughs> that EG can take this game. I needed that, like, Minute that Austin gave me. Uh, yeah, you're welcome, William. Thank you. Well, I actually have a last minute change. I think <laughs> Evil Genius is also really. You know what? I changed my mind. The Death Prophet just looks so good to me, Paul. What can I say? EG, bleed blue all the way, boys. Okay, and on that note, um, we're going to move swiftly on before these two fall out and never ever commentate again together. Uh, we're going to hand you off to our commentary team for game number two. This one should be a cracker Evil Geniuses versus Team Secret. You know I'm really glad that Capitalist and Blitz are on the panel because it means they're not down here with me casting this game. Cinderin, hey. nice to have you here, man. Yep. EG versus Secret. EG, the old school lineup as far as roster goes. And Secret actually give us the old school draft wise as far as meta goes. Yeah, this is uh, some quite different drafts from not not only from each other, but also a bit from, from a meta perspective. Uh, Juggernaut is not a hero we see too often. It's it's obviously very good with the Empower of Magnus. I think if it wasn't for Mac, they would not have picked this hero in this game, even though it has other merit. 
Uh, but as far as Secret goes, very classic Ember Spirit from them, obviously, a standard pick uh, for that particular team. Mid one is arguably the best player in the world in this hero, I think, together with maybe Miracle mm -hmm. uh, from Team Liquid. Uh, EG's lineup is very streamlined toward five manning in this game, I think. Um, they said that the benefit of Clinks is that there's some catch, uh, some the ability to get pickoffs, and while that is true, I think EG's idea around the draft is they want to group up in five man to negate Night Stalker's impact for skirmishes and to overwhelm Ember Spirit before it gets farmed. So, yeah. I feel like this could be a quick game, and I really like EG's draft. I'm really hoping it's not a quick game. We've only got one game between these two teams. <laughs> I like this to drag yeah. out a lot. We get that wonderful mid-game team fight extending into late game, but. You are right, where EG got so much strength to push. The Clinks and the Death Prophet together, that's so much damage that I'm interested to see how Team Secret and do Team Secret, are they forced to go out to initiate against EG? They have to be the ones to jump out or else EG just take buildings. My main concern for Secret is that I'm looking at this EG lineup, they're going to 5 me. They're going to go Roche and they're going to go Towers. Yeah. Can Secret actually kill their heroes? Because Secret's main damage output is physical. It's the Juggernaut with Empower, and then the Ember Spirit has Magic Burst in the beginning, but then later on that hero will generally scale in a physical direction most of the time. Mm -hmm. So oh, we're going to see a bit of a skirmish here. Yeah, actually they're going to go the spin. Reapsal's there with a the pickup. Universe losing life, but he is a very, very tanky hero on that Jakiro with both Fear and Crit behind him. We've found ourselves in a try on try lane in the, in the south. We've was what I wanted to talk about Yes, as the key thing here. Um, Amplification of armor against all that physical. And they have the Shallow Grave as well, which is a great tool against Magnus. A uh, hero like Death Prophet is very good with the Shallow Grave, just guaranteeing to get the Spirit Siphons off, and then you can actually heal yourself the amount that Dazzle can't. So, um, it to simplify this game, it basically comes down to EG will 5-man, can Secret defend? If Secret can defend long enough, their late game is extremely powerful. Uh, if they fail one or two fights, I think they're going to fall flat. And that puts a lot of pressure on Fata in this game. I think that Magnus needs a Blink Dagger, and he needs to find a good Blink Skewer or a good big uh, Blink RP when EG come to their base. So it's, It seems like a harder we'll matchup, though, for this Magnus. Like, he's 3-1 against the 5-1 of Arteezy. When Arteezy gets a couple of levels, how does Fata sustain on this offlane? Yeah, like, is, is he okay lane. as a Magnus? Uh, he's probably going to be okay, yeah. He has the poor man's shield and the Tango pack. We're seeing him queue up the Soul Ring. Uh, might see him get another Tango pack up there, but in my mind, this is definitely Clink's favorite matchup. The moment Clink's reaches level 5, the harassment just becomes too much to sustain. So and so then do you think about Secret's early rotations? Like, we, we look to a hero who who plays with the Nighttime, Night Stalker, who probably currently has a haste rune hunting that oh, melee courier. Yeah. <laughs> Not exactly what he wants to have happen. Now he's going to screw with the lane equilibrium in mid, but he's, he's oh, they're going. pinging it. He knows exactly where it is. Into the trees. That courier, it doesn't stand a chance. Oh, That's big. Yeah, that's very big. That's going to mess with Samael, and, he, and he needs to do that. He needs to do that. Also, this is a DP favorite lane. DP is very good against Ember Spirit in lane, so mid one having 11 and 1 here is actually very good. And now with the Courier Snipe, he's going to have the bottle advantage in mid if he goes that route. So. EG going to try and make the most out of the fact that Nice Stalker moved off the lane. A little bit of damage into Ace, but with Yapso holding his hand, EG can't find the kill. Whenever it comes down to these try versus try lanes, this is something that's somewhat uncharacteristic, this patch. Uh, Mineski have brought it back a little bit as of late to go these aggro trilanes. Um, these trilanes are most often decided by who can get the big camp pull off. Uh, we haven't really seen EG try too much the way it looks, but if they can manage to push this lane out with their Jakiro Dazzle, two heroes that are great uh, wave push early on. This, you see the Dazzle using the heal just to push the lane. Looks like Fear wants to go and try to pull this big camp. If they manage to do that and cover the entrance with their Earth Spirit, Secret can't go and contest that pull. They're just weaker in the fight. That pushdown also actually covers the rotation of the Earth Spirit. So mid one, uh, he's backing up just to, just to pass the bottle over. But Samel's ready to fight, if possible. They got the pull. Yeah, okay. Well, so the, the pull will work there. ES will come back down to the bottom lane. And just because that bottle maneuver, like nothing's going to happen as far as the first block in the mid. If Earth Spirit is here at this point, uh, EG can choose to fight. Oh, Magnus but... is actually dropping a little bit. That's that Searing Arrow sign to kick in from Arteezy. We have to watch that danger point before the five-minute shrine's available. That's when Fata's going to be limping on low life until he burns his, all of his consumables. And now it's time for Puppy to have some fun. So we get the first night time. He is level two. So we'll... 
perhaps be looking to make his first aggressive rotation with that Hunter in the Night, or finish his level 3. Uh, something that is interesting about Night Stalker as a support in this patch in comparison to the past is that we've seen more players experiment with going the 1-1-1 one, one, one build uh, for, to get that one key gank off. You sacrifice a bit of damage for a good silence. Mm -hmm. Uh, might want to stick around for that level 3, but then I think he, he really doesn't want to be here, you know? He's showing on wards, he's just part of the pull. This is not Night Stalker's dream scenario at the first night time. He wants to be putting pressure, and right now he's just trading, I want to say, instead of winning. It does seem hard, though, for, for him to move with that EG knowing it. Obviously, they don't know about that Observer Ward that's just been sitting there from EG on the bottom lane, but it scouted out Puppy's early aggression, and he was trying to block that pull that EG is now able to do. But the second they move off it, they're very well aware. Crit's going to move towards the mid lane, mid one. He's pretty safe behind the T1 town. In fact, with the Absol, moving in, we'll get the pick up, rolling Boulder forward, trying to create some space here. Crit able to get a double stun, and some Mail's damage is enough to kill off mid one. He'll back up. Both raindrops and one charges, giving Samael the confidence to go in deep. Crit, however, not out of dangerous territory yet. Void silenced him up, so Crit can't make it to the shrine in time. Only Samael will, and Puppy and Yapsaw, confidence support players, but they cannot go underneath that shrine. Ace, he's got a healing ward, so he'll survive in the bottom lane. Again, EG trying to make the most out of those rotation timings, but they get first blood. I was, before this play happened, I was going to say the problem for Night Stalker is he can't gank mid. You can't kill this DP with Night Stalker and Ember when Ember's level 5. Uh, so they bring the Rubik for the kill and they still fail, but they manage to at least run down a trade, like you said. But first blood going to EG and it goes, they get the core kill, which is really big in this situation. Sumail is now getting a lot more farm than mid one. He is two levels ahead currently in the mid lane in a favorable matchup. And now finally, mid one will crack level 6. But there's a lot more pressure on him in that mid lane. It's any rotation from Earth Spirit that's successful when Flame Guard is down, he can just die. So he has to play very carefully, and that's not the way you like to play Ember. I'm wondering too, like if if we're gonna hit that point where EG can force the issue. Obviously, we've still got another minute and 40 seconds worth of night time, and Puppy's trying to make the most of that, moving to the bottom lane, trying to track down Universe. Yep, so it's nearby, but EG already saw it coming, so they backed up in time. But d does EG push? Do you bring the Death Prophet into the same lane as the Chikiro? Do you just Force Team Secret to lose buildings once we hit daytime. I think there's there's like two options here that I like. Uh, one is to get DP down here with a rotation where he nukes out the mid wave and TPs to bottom, so it's a very quick maneuver and you get into that tower. Uh, the alternative is that they rotate crit plus one into mid and then they kill the Ember Spirit with the Exorcism and transition that into the tower push. I think those are the two best options. The nice benefit that EG have is that we're talking a lot about this DP, but there's silently a Klinks farming top, and this hero can easily rotate as well. He's got a 6, close to 7, uh, can death pack TP for a gank as well. He can kill mid, he can kill bottom. All comes down to whether Samael has a point in silence. Yeah. And that Ember will just die. And this means that Secret's map is very scary, even at nighttime with their Night Stalker, they can't really make plays. And all the praise I've given Secret for being really good at drafting strong lanes and winning matchups, it's just not following that recipe in this game. They actually don't have a single winning lane. Yep. And that's a problem. But this can come later. As long as Fada can keep his space up, as long as he can keep leveling up too, we can see points, more points going into the Empower. And that, that's kind of what you, you start to think back to all of the old Magnus and Juggernaut games that we did see. How do you actually stop the Juggernaut if you're not pushing? But that also requires Team Secret to be able to counter push, which is Fate Bolt and Shockwave? <laughs> it's not yeah, a lot. <laughs> their split push is good when Ember gets travels. That's going to be a big thing for them to look for. Uh, but that's still ways away. Oh, I'm going to see Crit. Speaking of ways away, he rolls very far away. And there is the Arteza rotation. Not the best opening here. Probably not going to get the kill. Yeah, it doesn't have a good uh, vision meantime, for it. Meantime, great camera work there from Mr. JJ. Hey, Just caught the tail end of that. <laughs> that was not sarcastic, but that's really good. He caught that kill. Uh, so mid one will die and they get the bottom tower. So this was the Arteza rotation. I think overall this is the stronger play uh, because they man maintain their pressure in that mid lane that they're winning so much with the DP. Look at yeah. those CS. I'm actually having a look at the net worth right now and this is pretty extreme right now. We've got a 4.6k net worth for the DP <laughs> compared to 2.6 on Ember. So he's almost doubling him up yep. nine minutes in. It's actually crazy too, the fact that EG are able to do that much damage that quickly to a tier 1 tower without committing a big ability. Like, the biggest thing you burn is mana and strafe on a clinks. That's it. Like, it just seems to be such a sustainable push from EG 
that if Team Seek are going to fight this, they have to jump in. You have to look to the Magnus, but still, Fada is oh, he not is quite ready to go, so you'll start the TP in. He almost has to skew it in to get close enough to get the ulti up at some mail. Well, you can lose the Absor in the mid, but that Exism on bottom, and the three-man silence, only one point in it, but the Searing Chains is nice. Crit's falling down low, but Samael still has such a huge amount of physical damage with the Spirits out. He's looking to kill off mid when another Spirit jump up will save his life. But Arteezy with a double damage rune heading to the bottom. He's kind of there a little too late though. That tier two tower is already guaranteed for evil geniuses. So they just took two towers within a minute and a half. Uh, they did burn the exorcism, but what we did not see, I think, there was the kill in mid at the same time. Klinks killed the Rubik, and I'm not sure if he did any tower damage in mid. Uh, not very substantial, but that is absolutely the next play for EG here. And now it just comes down to... I. I'm trying to find solutions for a secret, and the only solution I see right now to this problem is Magnus Blink Dagger. And this is not the kind of position you want to be in with Mag. I, the way I think of Mag as a hero is that the biggest benefit of the hero is Empower. So you want to build a lineup that can use Empower, which they have, but currently he's also their only real teamfight. So when this five-man lineup comes at them, the only other AoE really reliable damage that they have is Ember Spirit remnanting in. If yep. this Ember Remnant's in, he dies. So he can't play like that. And that means, you know, how did these fights even take place? Oh, nice kill from Arteezy. Finds Puppy in the jungle. Man, I bet you Cap and Blitz are very happy they switched their minds to EG right now. I mean, they, but, they've they said both teams would win. So, you know, then you kind of safeguard yourself. It can't be a draw in the best of one. You know? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Three Searing Arrows is really all it takes. Chris, the control factor. Support's coming in. Fada. Oh, Shockwave again, like... He even bought the Arcane Bruise. He's delaying that Blink Dagger in order to be able to continuously spam his abilities. Both the both the Shockwave, but it's the Empower buff up. He just needs that Mana Pool. And EG are making the most out of it. 5.8k net worth on Death Prophet, just over 5k on a Clinks, And the closest you get is 3.8k on a Juggernaut, who's still nowhere near strong enough to battle evil geniuses. I'm having your fear too now, Send. This is going to be a quick game. It, it looks very possible. The thing, it's very delicate when you're playing Magnus with Empower Heroes, because if if Secret get that team fight, then it's a different story. I was looking at damage right now. This is... So it is. Two cores dealing a lot of damage, Toby. That's what we got so far. Yeah. If DP has dealt more damage than the Radiant combined, I think, actually. Is my math right? It's close. Pretty sure. Somewhat. Yeah. So... It's, it's kind of the fear we have with this Radiant lineup, right? It's that they, they cannot deal damage yet. They actually cannot combine their heroes into make meaningful kills. So um, the pace of this is still very EG favored, and Secret will need that big team fight. And the question is if EG will present it to them. Right now, it looks like Arteezy will present Fada a quick trip to the base. Nope, never mind. He's no. not going for it. He's, he's watching closely, maybe a little bit dissuaded by the fact that Juggernaut was nearby. But Fada is being very, very aggressive. Like Samuel's is sitting in front. I'm wondering if Fada's just trying to get information from Evil Geniuses. Where are they coming? Where are they going to push? There's only one more tier one tower remaining. So maybe the answer to that is pretty obvious. <laughs> I don't think he needs to get this info. This is the most <laughs> obvious push ever. And oh. it's coming. Good shockwave from Fata. He's going to delay it as much as he can, but I'm pretty sure Secret have no interest in even trying to take this fight. I think they're shooting themselves in the foot if they try to defend. Right now, you try to maximize, you take advantage of the night time, get some information with Night Stalker, get some bounty runes, and look to do the split game and get something something meaningful going your way. Forcing EG back to defend is the key here. I'm waiting for Puppy to get caught out by Arteezy. He has crossed over the line, and now oh, Arteezy... Oh, he didn't see him. He did? Oh, uh, he saw him. Yeah, he did see now. Doesn't want to go, though. Board time though, Ember Spirit was pushing in the bottom lane, and that's that's what you were talking about. Like that's the delay. The split push that Ember, Ember Spirit's able to provide. This now allows Juggernaut to move towards the top, but EG, they are already there. The top tower. Ace will get the last hit, and maybe he can take that as a consolation prize. He'll avoid the kick. And where is this TP out? With the spin, with the control, there's no stun. Ace will escape a four-man initiation on him and take the last hit on the top tower. That was a rare miss from from crit. That kick was not going the way he was intending. Uh, might have expected Ace to sidestep or something, but that kick was just way off the mark. And they, they miss a kill. That's big for Secret that he manages to survive here. The tower falls, he gets out from that gank. Mm -hmm. Space creation as exactly. well. Exactly. EG's not pushing while they're, while they're failing a gank. You need to buy time. And this is like the ideal situation. This is better than if, if EG didn't come there. If he just got the tower for free, that would be, one, that would be good. 
But the fact that he gets the tower and gets a rotation and survives is so, so nice for the Ember. Because now Ember feels safe bottom for like 30 seconds to a minute where he can push this wave. Because yep. to kill him, they have to TP now. Oh, crit. Oh, crit. There's uh, your jump in. Puppy. Well, he'll fly up. The Observer and Sentry Ward lets them see him. And there's that fresh Yule Scepter from Universe. He did. Able to get the hit and a quick attack from EG with a nice blend of both physical and magical damage. It's impossible to survive. Yep. If DP had mana now, they would do Roche, I think. But. Samael has emptied the tank, so he probably has to either send out a lot of clarities and pop a shrine or go back to base. Well, Team T can have one nice advantage. They know there's an Observer Ward and the exact position of it because their Observer and Sentry, they planted up, they saw EG coming to the top lane. This tower will also mm -hmm. inevitably fall. They will glyph it and buy some time. And It's a trade-off for the bottom tower. Do they have the damage bottom to get this? Quite sure they do. With the creep skip and the tower slow enough, sure, but you got your timing. The blink dagger just arrived, so just under 15 minutes is how long it took for Fada to get it. Uh, Kratos calling silence. the bluff. Nice kick. Well, is there a fallout? Mid oh, one, perfect silence. silence, too. How long will it last? Is it going to be long enough? Mid one, the ice path from Universe reaches him just in the nick of time. Right, there's a lot of things that happen there that make that such a great play. First of all, he lands a nice roll in silence into stun. Secondly, they time the TP correctly with it, knowing that it's a short TP. Third, they TP in a secondary hero that needs to land that ice path so that he can't run it out. All of it clicks and they get the deny. That is top tier stuff from EG. That's the best play of the game so far. EG looking good. Maybe PGL was also shaking them up. They looked good over there until a couple of hiccups. But so far, the draft is nice. Yep, the they did put Jakiro mid. Good job, EG. Yep, that's Keep it up. improvement. Lich isn't <laughs> playing fear. Uh, maybe on the uh -huh. other way around. <laughs> it was banned actually by themselves. Yeah. All jokes aside, I, I mean, I th I think Jakiro mid definitely works some games, but I think you want a good core matchup. Um, and in this game, that would not... It's actually pretty good against Ember in lane. But the the way they put their lanes and the heroes that they put on their players in this game, I, th I cannot put a finger on EG's decision of how to lane and what heroes they picked so far in this game. I think it's been very solid. Uh, now they just need to transition and make sure they don't slip up, because Secret will start going on the hunt now with that Blink Dagger we mentioned. Yep. And they need to keep their composure to secure this Roshan, probably waiting for daytime. Darkness is used. It's a funny thing though, this gank, the, the Courier's about to fly right over the top of them, so they've got a choice if they want to kill Courier, or if they want to kill something else, but that Courier had a decent amount on it. Uh, but now Team Secret have to get the hell out of here. Five heroes from EG are converging. Mid one signed the top push. Puppy does have his CP scroll. He trying did. to be almost distraction. And mid one, he knows he's in pretty deep. Question is, can he get back out? Puppy being attacked by Fierce Mal in Universe. He'll feel fall. Mid one got in deep. Oh, oh the kick! God. Crit's gonna get him right in front of the fountain. The silence will last long enough. The searing arrow is more than enough damage from Arteezy to find that kill. Meanwhile, Space created! <laughs> so, this is awkward, right? They... Fata broke their smoke bottom. They didn't find anything, so they went and hit the creep wave. And that means Puppy and Midwan are in the middle of nowhere. They fortunately for them find a courier. But since they both hit it, they give their entire smoke and positioning away. And then they have two choices. Either they instantly try to TP out, and then they're gonna die if there's an Earth Spirit there that has a kick, or they try to run around do using the Darkness Nighttime to try to juke EG, and it just didn't work. So this courier kill basically gave EG a Roche, a core kill, and a support kill, and they cannot be happy with that. Yeah. Ember dying is the worst death right now for uh, for Team Secret. He has to be able to scale. This mid one right now does not deal damage except this magical burst he has. Who on Radiant kills this DP agent? I think they if, have to Omni Slash. It's, yeah, it's, it's going to be RP into Empowered Up Omni Slash. That's the only way this is really going to work. That's the first life. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the only way to do it. Maybe you can bring down enough support heroes that they get caught in it. And this is this is assuming, too, that you can control the Dazzle. Like, we still haven't yes. even felt the effect of the Shallow Grave. And that's a Shallow Grave for whoever you initiate on, the DP. I, and then she gets her survivability items as well. She's already walking around with a Yule Scepter, a Veil, a Hood. That's a lot of tank ability. And now... Oh! <laughs> Double damage rune on Arteezy, just two hit at mid one. Family show, Toby. <laughs> yeah. But still, what the fuck? Huh? <laughs> that was a literal two shot. Uh, that was actually a two shot. Yeah, so yeah. double damage, medallion, desolator. I don't think there was any weave there. There wasn't, he hasn't used it. But yeah, mid one wanted that rune and he paid and crit. He had that little bit of slip up on the kick earlier we said, but after mm -hmm. that, it's been, it's been very, very solid here. He's yeah. landing his spells very nicely. 
Now th I... this seems to be that point to where Team Secret have to make a choice. <laughs> They're trying time. to keep the split push going. They got Ember up in six seconds time. EG will, by the pressure they were almost sort of applying in towards the mid, they force the movement back of Team Secret. So we're gonna see it. <laughs> okay, quickest highlight ever. <laughs> that, that, that took a grand total of 0 0.2 seconds. It's like one of those replays where the kill is so short, you should put it in slow-mo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that it fills out at least 10 seconds of gameplay. No, no, we, we uh, didn't have that other film. Let's do that again. You just loop it and loop it and it was, loop it. It was a very accurate depiction of what it felt like being Ember there. Yeah. Just like, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yep. Uh, no, way to, no way to really answer to that either. That's that silence control. Like Cap was talking, like maybe Arteezy needs to go in for this build with the Orchid, but maybe not when you've got the control coming in from both the ES as well as the Death Prophet. That yeah. does more than enough work. And it's forcing the Ember to buy this Yules, which he doesn't want to do either. Uh, the Yules is almost complete, I believe, now on the Ember. I, I like that at. stat as well from Ace. Like, it really shows you just how much he has not been involved in anything. And it's a lot of jungle as well. It was more neutrals than lane creeps. That yep. generally is an indication that you're being pressured a lot and that you're uncertain about pushing your advantage in lanes. Uh, if you look at how Secret play the games where they have good core matchups and they're ahead, they pressure the lanes constantly. But in this game, they just don't really have the confidence to make those movements. Um, every time EG are missing one or two key heroes, they feel like they can die to this Earth Spirit plus Clinks combo. And when EG are showing up to push towers, they feel like they can't defend. Oh, uh, hey, how much confidence have you got, RTZ? All right, guys, can we have a replay of that one? Uh, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> he's, he's got 1 minute and 45 seconds left on this Aegis the Immortal, so why not? And even after that attack, mid one is willing to move forward, but the rest of EG are coming. They're moving oh, through the Radiant Jungle. Oh, Where's that no, spirit? No, 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 no. Arteezy, oh, mid one, get the hell out of there or else you'd be dead. Universe will send him up in the air. Not the greatest combination of abilities, but even with that, mid one, uncertain of what was going through his mind. I don't... I... I feel like at this point he can't play without a defensive remnant. I think he needs to have one out all the time. If he doesn't have one ready, or if if he's pushing so far out on the lane that his old defensive remnant is expiring, he has to respect, I, respect it and I, get I, out. I hate to say, but have we actually just next level what he did where he just played the bait game? In order to get evil geniuses to go on bottom lane, bring their silences to kill him off, you then got Juggernaut getting a last hit in the tower. You're actually scaling your Juggernaut while this happened. And he spent his money before death. I, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, he could Looking have, on the bright side. He could have made the same move with a defensive remnant and dodged the gank. That would have been even better. That would have been smart too. That kill was a five second kill. Maybe it got them the tower. Like maybe they could have glyphed and just clutch defended it on low HP instead. But uh, you generally don't want a core to die for that. If you could have done it with your Night Stalker or your Rubik, you know, okay. You can always can get a support kill for tier two. EG will not be happy with that. But getting this Ember Spirit, it's, it's a big kill. Even if you give space to the Jugger, you're not very happy with this. What happened to the net worth, by the way? EG were... Yeah. More ahead than this. It's it's just the fact that you've seen Team Secret having Something that empower buff up. Here. <laughs> Something is wrong here. I'm seeing 5k on the graph and 3k on the number up there. Okay. So. I mean, technically hey. 5k is above 3k. Just so. remember, we're still in beta. So EG are attacking the bottom tier 3 tower, but they're being pushed on the top. So while all Good that split. was going on, it was half damage. So Team Secret just took a tier 2 tower up on top. They did half damage to the tier 3 tower, but if they lose this fight, this will be worth it. But Fada, he shadow blades in, it was fresh for him as a double RP, but the follow-up is too good. Universe is in the back lines with the magnetized silence from Crit. I don't think they can keep him alive. Yep, so it will end up falling. The Yule Scepter, it'll grab Ace 2. He'll spin quickly, avoiding the stun, which comes from that beautiful ice path. The Universe, in they go. They brought everybody in apart from just that one defender up on top. Yapsaw has to buy back. They don't have the Magnus anymore. They don't have his initiation. They don't have his Empower buff up either. But EG seem to be happy with this. The Aegis is already gone and they will back up. I like the way... Um, I like the idea from both teams here. Oh, uh, no. He is... He is... Probably bar? okay here. What have you got? Actually, Min, what, where's your spirit? He has a remnant. He's baiting. He's buying time. Is he? Okay. Yeah, there you go. So, the good plays from both teams there. First of all, like you said, secret force of rotation top. But the way EG did it was they TP'd back one hero, which was Dazzle. So they're like arguably weakest hero right now. TP'd him mm -hmm. back. And this made Secret feel like they could take this fight bottom five and four. But what they didn't account for is that they were running up to the high ground without vision and EG were having a really good defensive position. And although that RP came out, they instantly got the Yules after, so the Skewer combo didn't come off, and EG just counterplayed them very well. So that was a, that was a 
I would say overall better play from EG probably in that position, but it's good for a Secret to try to force this type of fight. That's what yeah. they need to look for. If they want to fight, they need to outnumber. Especially with the timing of it. Like the Shadow Blade was only picked up like a couple of seconds before that fight began. So EG had no idea about it and they were caught a little bit off guard, but then it's the farm which you've already got in Universe. He was able to stop any kind of skewer back to follow up and that would have brought the fight into the low ground. But it didn't happen. Now it's a uh, potential pickup on bottom lane. Ateezy being stalked by Fana. They'll skewer him in. The silence is there from Puppy. You do not have RP available, so they'll need more damage or detection or something. But EG, they have crit Puppy. God, that damage is so high. They brought in the help. Fana actually gets the kill onto Arteezy with mid one's extra control with Searing Chains. They want a little bit more if possible. Chasing crit who has Blink Dagger and Universe behind him. So they'll back up, but that's a much needed kill. That's only the third one for Team Secret in this game, but it's a big one, over 600 gold for just that one. And Atiz is probably scratching his head right now. I think that is a position on the map he should not be in at that t point in time. You look at the warding of both teams, you look at where the lanes are. Uh, the reason that camp is so dangerous to farm is that you're, you're on the low ground, so there's multiple attack angles for the Radiant. If they're smoked and come from any side, he will die. They can catch him from the left, they can catch him from the right, they can even come in from above if they walk through the river and he was there completely alone, with no protection. If there's anybody defending him, he will survive that gank. But he was on his own, has to respect that, doesn't, and Secret, as a result, pick up a really big kill. The uh, point where Puppy was also the lure. Like, he had a moment where he could have just walked away. But EG are pretty confident. They tried to stick around a fight. Yabsaw, waiting for last hit on tower. Waiting. Yep, can't fade bolt it though, dude. You gotta hit. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! If, if you can't get the timing, then we just prove like Yapsor is nothing without Fade Bolt. Oh, he just wants the wave. <laughs> yeah, fair. Fade, fade Bolt the wave. He's, the get, he's, he's getting experience. He's almost got the Blink Dagger. This is good. This is the kind of stuff that I think Yapsor needs to be doing in this position. Is he needs to apply pressure on the lanes as a support because the cores are a too big risk. Mm -hmm. and don't feel like doing it, his risk reward ratio is way better than any of the cores in the game. So. Are we turning, in, turning him into like AUI 2000 now? Yeah, he has a good spell for it. He has Crypt Swarm, so he can nuke out the wave pretty easily, and that's good. want to mention, by the way, that Universe is doing his uh, patented Jakiro build. I, this is the player that I connect this build with. He has Blink Dagger and uh, Duels on Jakiro. Seeing it in use right now, gives yep. him an easy setup into the combo that will net a kill here on Puppy. Yep. What did Yapsor steal? He got the dual breath. Dual breath. Oh. Meanwhile, the mid's a kill. Crit. Yep, they may, may should bring him back. They're trying to block oh. the rolling boulder out. Shallow grave. And the rolling boulder, which couldn't be blocked when he was on the edge of the cliff. I feel like that should have been a kill. It felt but like it should have been a kill. But he got good out. Place nice by save. EG. Yep, nice save. I like yep. the way you could very easily tell how they were communicating movement. Like, mm -hmm. come to the end of the cliff, I'm coming from the other side. And Shallow grave has enough reach to get over there when it's level four. Is so, you're actually delaying the denial of nice. that mid tower. It's, it's got no life whatsoever. We should mention, though, Secret are doing a very good job catching up. Like, EG have been slowed down so much that this... Look at this gold graph. Like, the Arteza kill was probably about 1,500 or 2k out of this, but the rest is just very good control of the map. Uh, they got this bottom tier 2 tower that we saw Yapsor stand next to. They're farming, they're pushing out waves, and EG don't seem able to put the amount of pressure that they would like. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of odd, right? Like. We saw EG as the lineup of, like, they're going to have the big five-man ball. But is it is it just because this top lane pressure, because the side lane push, which is able to come in so quickly, I, I think do, do you just take the trade anyway when you have the next Aegis? I think they need to split their heroes better. Uh, I would like them to try a play where they... The Clinks is not showing. Like, last time Arteezy got caught, he was farming the big camp. Mm -hmm. But I think the way they should do it is that Arteezy eats a creep, immediately goes invisible, and then he smokes with the Earth Spirit. And they get a pick-off. And that pick-off can turn into a tower. But as long as these cores are showing and they keep just responding to split push, mm -hmm. Secret should be punished when they make these moves. Earth Spirit plus Clinks kills any hero in the Secret lineup. Yep. Zero exceptions. They will just die. But they haven't tried this move for quite a while. And it allows Secret to just very safely push out lanes, get farmed, see almost a Shiva's guard now suddenly completed on mid one. He was having an awful game yep. and is now slowly but steadily catching up. And if EG just keeps running as a group of five, they will not reach their objective because they will always be forced back to defend the other lanes by this Ember Spirit and Juggernaut. So you have to commit some heroes to a skirmish while the rest of the core stick together. Is Puppy actually putting this Observer Ward down as well so they can see just how hard they can push a lane? Uh, you'll see the TP support coming in, so you've got one ward hovering over the secret shop, but another one that's inside the base of Evil Genius has that's a, really good a lot of information. Maybe making it a little bit more obvious, uh, he put a ward there by cutting down the trees. 
Yeah. They didn't notice? Okay. Well, they won't see it unless they literally put the camera there. It's not like it shows on the minimap that the trees are gone. Could you imagine the minimap if you could see every tree on the minimap? Yeah, that would be uh, spam. Now, yep. Team Secret, this is the fight they are sort of looking for. Ember Spirit's not there just yet, but it's the position of both the Juggernaut as well as the Magnus. Look for that RP around Roshan. Here comes your Spirit Jump forward. In very, very deep, they bait the Ice Path down from Universe. RP only catches Universe in the back line. It's like they've he's become target number one, and they have the damage. Evil Genes have lost three. It's about to be four. Arteezy, he can't survive it. Less fear gives him that second life. They you all set for him up, waste the time of Arteezy, and now they bring him down. The Aegis Immortal, of course, he gathered that from Roshan, but there needs to be more control. Where's the detection? Silence and dust. No way to jump out of this, and Arteezy will fall. And Evil Geniuses, the worst fight that could potentially imagine, just happened. And Yabsaw, oh wait, is he actually going to with the Ghost Walk? No. Fear's actually backed up towards the lane. Secret have completely just turned the game around. This is a somewhat stereotypical Magnus game where you lose out a little bit early and you can come back. Uh, but I think at this point, it's just fair to say EG missed their window. I think that first Aegis should have given them a lane of barracks if they played it better. Uh, again, just committing one or two heroes to one skirmish while oh, that push. Ward. Oh, that's a very dead dazzle. The war they didn't see before is going to spell the death of fear. And now they push high ground. Ace as well as mid one with the empowered buff ups do a hell of a lot of work still. No ultimates up for Team Secret at the moment. But they have the physical damage to bring down the Tier 3 tower. A little bit more time. Arteezy not wanting to expend that buyback. He's got 13 seconds left before it's back up. Oh, that's a stolen weave from Yapsor as well. It's a really good spell to steal in this game. Especially when Klinks is going to come up. By the time he's there ready to fight, they're going to be maxed up on the armor. There's Team Secret. They're actually the they're first up. in this game to take a melee rax. And just as much as I was talking about earlier in the game that Secret need to find a good fight when EG come to their base and pressure them, it's the same with EG where if they lose one or two cores in bad positions, all of the momentum that they've got going for them just goes out the window. Their lineup is pretty delicate in the sense that the five-man moves need to be successful and give some, some objectives because they can't just farm and win this game. Like, the yep. cores are not strong enough. Jakiro falls off really hard. Uh, Klinks, I would argue, also falls off pretty hard. DP is their only hero that scales, like, really, really nicely. Uh, against the Radiant lineup, but now they're in a pretty awkward spot. Yeah, everything's coming up secret. Yep. In fact, I think that kill count, has that even, like, we were we were three, well, we were two for 15, I think, at one point. And now it's, yeah, yeah it's, no, like it's nothing but yellow marks on the board for Team Secret. They're green, Toby. Green, yellow, <laughs> you colorblind. Green, green. So what do you do as EG now is the question. Like they, that Aegis that they just lost, they still have the cheese on Clinks. They can technically try for a play where they give the cheese to the DP, which I think they have done and make an aggressive movement. I think what they don't do is just sit back and farm. Have to either force a five man rotation where they are risking their own base at the bottom lane currently. There's a wave pushed in really far. So this is a very obvious movement hoping that Secret falls for this, or once again, I would like to see a different split. But at this point, the moment of opportunity might be gone. That's the move they should have made 13 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. the, when you think about it, they've kind of played this Clinks a little bit too greedy, I would say. You like say his play style. Greedy because he just sits back and farms. His play style, not no his uh, not his itemization. I like uh, the itemization of Arteezy very much this game, but when you're Clinks, I don't feel like you're satisfied with the way the last 10 minutes have gone. Like this hero is a snowball hero in my book. Like you want to keep fighting and finding kills taking advantage of uh, of the Earth Spirit in particular. But, but instead, he was, he was, like, ever since he started trying to build that Assault Curious, like, he'd been working on that Hyperstone for the last 10 minutes. He's had the rest of the AC just sitting on him. Yep. And ha only now just completed it 32 minutes in. I mean, he's still really strong. It's not I that. Like, this Clanks is really hard, but... Um, he can only hit hard when he's actually, like... Like, Team Secret took that entire mid lane without Clinks being a factor. Yeah. The so, issue that EG has also run into is that their lineup doesn't have the best wave clear. So the moves need to be accurate and swift, else they have to go back and defend just naturally. Mm -hmm. the, the best wave clear hero they have is DP with the Crypt Swarm. Jakira can do it somewhat well with these spells, obviously. Ooh, Arteezy. And this then, might be a good opening. Oh. Ace, up they run, then down they run. Butterfly. Ace is... Well, he's got no idea that Arteezy is stalking him, but there's no one that can control him that's nearby. And he's not that easy of a kill with that butter either. Mm -hmm. There's that's no a, MKB that's on the That's a lot of money banked on, on the Ember. Yep, it's going BKB. I think it's a really good choice this game. 
Yeah, you've already got one on uh, on Fada. So you've got BKB on both Magnets as well as that Ember Spirit. Ace for the moment, like, as you said, like, he picked up the Butterfly, Manta, and Diffusal, so he's not going to go for the Muni when he's already got the spin. Yeah. Mid one is a very difficult kill on his BKB. Like, usually when Embers have BKB, you still feel like you can kill them with Physical, but he has a Shiva. It's 32 armor. Um, and obviously the full mobility, since there's no BKB piercing spells on the Dire at all, except the DP ulti, of course, but no lockdowns. So I'll have an easy time maneuvering the fights. And this is just, it's interesting to see how the flow of this game has changed so quickly. Like, I would have thought that the, the outcome I was predicting was that EG get a good start, get good lanes, and then they snowball and take towers, and then they have a big advantage, and then the graph keeps going down. Yeah. But I thought if Secret were going to come back, it wouldn't be this explosive. I thought it would be a slower development, but in the last 5 to 10 minutes, they've taken a 15k swing with that Roche fight into now a 10k gold lead with the mid racks. Maybe it's also that mindset that we had. Like, it's the fact that, like, how does the graph, like, the graph doesn't look right. How is there so much money on Team Secret? EG doesn't have access to the information that we do. And then that Roshan fight happens, like, okay, wait, I thought we were, like, oh, 10,000, like, gold in front of this. this smoke is... on smoke action. Here comes your jump. It's a good kick into a silence, but will it be enough damage? Juggernaut is falling, but then the better double stun. Ice path forward from Yapsaw. They're keeping the control into the Omni Slash. RTZ almost down, is down, and the RP from Fada in the back lines. Universal try and create some space. There's no Macropire as well as the Ice Path, but it won't be enough. Samael, he's got the extra life available, but he is really... The last man standing with the heavy physical damage is just Universe as well as the male. They're trying to find the pickoffs now. Mid one gets away from the swarm of spirits. And it's kite time. Exorcism's only got another one quarter left of time left on it. Yapsaw <laughs> keeps them controlled and they are waiting it out. Bang the saucepans out. They're waiting for the perfect moment. The sentry ward. Oh, up they go in towards the air. He'll get all the heal from the exorcism of spirits, but that heal will not save him. Four heroes waiting. Mid one's ready to spirit jump back in again, and Samael will fall. EG lose everything. And they even get to shrine back up to full health and then start their push once more. That was a funny, that was a funny last 20 seconds of that fight. <laughs> Four heroes kiting one guy, just. Layering disables, buying time, buying time, running in circles, and then eventually overpowering the Death Prophet. So what set all of this up was a really good scan from Secret. They had the right read on this moment, and they bait their Juggernaut. So they put Ace in front, assuming that he will not die to the opening move of EG. And the reason they put the faith in him to survive is the Butterfly. They know that there's no counter on the EG side, so his effective HP against this physical damage is very, very high. Mm -hmm. And he gets the Healing Ward off. And at the, at the point Jugger survives that opening move and gets the Healing Ward off, I feel like that fight is unsalvageable for EG. They're doing their best, but they can't win the fight anymore. Well, Ace is the man on the front lines. No Aegis the Immortal to give him strength there. Instead, it's just going to be... Oh, that initiation! They waited! Yapsaw was so quick with the jump to grab Arteezy. The race really just is the bait. Tier 3 tower, still very low. The catapult, one more attack would have done it. And Team Secret are happy with what they've got. Samael has respawned. They'll back back up again and get control of this map. And they are well in control. 15,000 is now the net worth advantage in favor of Team Secret. Yep, they just need to push the waves out again and try not to get caught. Uh, once again, EG is wave clear, being so lackluster. That, in my book, is the biggest weakness of Klinks as a hero, is his inability to push waves. So when you have Klinks, you need multiple other heroes that push waves. Death Prophet does it well, Jakira does it well, and arguably Dazzle can somewhat do it with the, sh with the, with the Shadow Wave, but he wants to not show, ideally, and be protecting his cores. So that was the problem that kind of swung Secret back into the game, was just playing the waves. Mm -hmm. And now that they're ahead, it's even worse, because okay. now EG struggle so much to get any info on the map. They're running for it. Team oh, Secret, they've got Samel. the high ground. Samel walks right into it. Universe, he'll get the ice path off. So will the Shallow Graves. And Samel have a little bit more time to try and live through this. But Fada skewering back in again. It looks like Evil Geniuses have no way out of this engagement. All five heroes will be lost once more. And nothing of value was lost from Team Secret. This should be an easy push up mid to a second lane of Rax. It's going to be a couple of buybacks here. I feel like these buybacks are pretty much inconsequential. It doesn't stop Secret from doing anything. They're trying to scare them off here. There's like scare tactics, hoping that Secret will think twice about going high ground. They're not scared of a 5 on 2. At least, at least there's no RB. Like, Third buyback. Advantage. I think they still don't care. 
So this is basically three buybacks just expended for Oh, the, the double searing chain spirit jump in. Final will skew him back down again. Arteezy was able to go invisible and he does get a few to blade it up, but still hidden invis and this game looks like it's over. In fact, it is EG will call the good game 38 minutes in and a bit for extra change after Team Secret. They were getting no kills on the board. The farm was low. Did the we, comeback train was on the rails. Did we go from 215 to 2016? I believe so. Oh, was it 315? It was definitely no, no, it 315. Was, it, it, it was 315. It was 215. It was 314. I'm sure it was 314. It was 314.